Ladies and gentlemen, I will call to order the September 3rd, 2019 meeting of the Greater Dayton RTA <coughs> Board of Trustees. We all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ms. Stanforth, could you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Williamson. Present. Ms. Kirsten. Here. Ms. Herd. Mr. Hoagie. Here. Ms. Howard. Present. Mr. Lumpkin. Here. Ms. Matthew Stinson. Here. Mr. Webster. Here. Thank you. Uh, having heard the roll called, I will declare that a quorum is present. Uh, prior to today's meeting, the agenda for today's meeting was distributed to all board members and uh, consistent with the organization's bylaws, it is necessary that uh, the uh, board approve the agenda prior to this meeting continuing. So I will ask all board members, are there any additions, corrections, or comments regarding today's agenda? <coughs> Hearing none, the chair will... Uh, exercise its prerogative to uh, accept the agenda, the consent agenda, as approved. Uh, the bo board meeting minutes of the August 6, 2019 board meeting were distributed to all board members prior to today's meeting. Uh, do any board members have any uh, corrections, questions, or comments regarding same? Hearing none, uh, the chair will exercise its prerogative to accept the board meeting minutes from the August 6th meeting as approved. Committee reports, Finance Personnel Committee, Mr. Lumpkin. Thank you, Mr. President or Mr. Chair, or however we're going these days. Um, although the committee did not meet during the month of August, I'm gonna bring forth one action item for the board's consideration. Action item number two, Trapeze Professional and Technical Services. <clears throat> Trapeze Software Group is the sole provider of Trapeze Enterprise Asset Management, EAM, and Operations Management, <clears throat> OPS, software systems. In March 2013, Greater Dayton RTA Board of Trustees approved the purchase of EAM to replace the existing fleet asset maintenance management software systems that was no longer supported by the vendor. This purchase included software licenses, implementation services, and five-year maintenance agreement for a total not to exceed cost of $794,480. To date, the chief executive officer has authorized change orders increasing the total by $74,591 or 9.39% for a grand total of $869,071. In February 2017, RTA implemented the Trapeze OPS dispatch timekeeping system to manage the transportation workforce with regard to scheduling and timekeeping. That system handles RTA union rules and feeds <clears throat> the timekeeping to RTA's payroll system. The plan for the implementation of the EAM for maintenance includes the integration of EAM with OPS to handle the scheduling and timekeeping of maintenance workforce. During the final stages of the implementation of EAM, a few modifications to the interfaces between <coughs> EAM and OPS are required to handle some unique timekeeping rules for maintenance. These rules include special circumstances with shift start time and work during lunch. RTA is requesting the authorization of the additional funds beyond the 10% threshold for which the CEO is authorized to approve. The purchase of the professional and technical services to enhance the performance of tra trapeze EAM and OPS software will allow staff to utilize it to accurately maintain timekeeping per union rules. This purchase supports RTA's core value of stewardship through the effective and efficient use of agency services. The cost of trapeze to perform this work is $28,225 for the customizations and $1,943 for a year of support for these customizations. <clears throat> since, this is the sole, since this is the sole source, a cost analyst was performed to determine if the price received is fair and reasonable. Trapeze pricing was found to be similar to other professional and technical 
work performed for the RTA, such as the implementation services for OPS in 2016-17 and the implementation of the Blockbuster Run Cut software in 2013. Since Trapeze Software is proprietary, they are the only vendor that can provide the technical and professional services and the cost is considered <coughs> necessary and unavoidable. The associated details are included in today's board package and staff is available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. I have <clears throat> one question. How does this update enhance the present system that we presently have or make it more accurate? I, this specific upgrade has to do with making the final connection so that all the different softwares that now have to play together are for things like payroll and Chris or others can uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is something we've been working on for years to integrate the new attendance tracking, payroll coming through, what they call ops, all of that. Uh, and it was, we were close but just didn't have enough money to finish the job. So. Uh, that's the idea here is to finish the connection uh, and uh, Tim is not here today but he assures me this is it uh, for this project to get it all up and running thank you you're welcome any other questions before I make the motion <clears throat> hearing none based upon the state of information I move to award a contract to trapeze software group incorporated in the not to exceed amount of $28,225 for purchases of trapeze professional and technical services and the $1,943 for a year of support for a total of $30,168. The grand total not to exceed award will now be $899,239. This procurement will be funded with 80% federal grant funds. I'll second. A motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Uh, some additional items, the May 2019 sales tax update. In May 2019 sales tax receipts equal $3.3 million. Uh, receipts exceed May 2018 by $18,000 or a whopping half percent. Receipts exceed the May 2019 budget by $41,000 or 1.2 percent. Year to date sales tax in May receipts equal $15.6 million. They exceed the year to date May 2018 by $402,000 or 2.6 percent, and they exceed the budget. May 2019 budget by 390,000 or 2.6%. The July financial statements for the month of July in 2019, the net loss before federal and state depreciation is $586,000. This is $236,000 worse than budgeted loss of $350,000. This negative variance is largely due to higher wages and benefits expenses along with higher insurance and purchased transportation. The year-to-date July 2019 net loss before federal and state depreciation is $609,000. This is $1.4 million better than, uh, better than budgeted loss of $2 million. The overall positive variance is largely due to lower wages and benefits, lower material and supplies, and lower fuel and lubricant, lubricants. Uh, the $552,000 net increase in the fair value investment was a major contributing factor as well. Local depreciation expenses exceed budget by $277,000. The details and the variance explanations associated with the financial statement are included in today's board meeting package. And that concludes my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Lumpkin. Uh, planning Committee, Ms. Howard. Good afternoon. While the finance personnel and planning committees did not meet for a jointly held meeting this past month, we do have important updates to provide. This past month, the RTA provided shuttle service from the University of Dayton Arena to the Gym City Shine event held in the Oregon District. During this time, RTA carried nearly 20,000 people to the event. On October 21st, the RTA, along with the City of Dayton, Link Bike Share, and the Downtown Dayton Partnership, welcomed spin scooters to the city. 
This included an announcement of RTA's partnership with SPIN to provide on-the-ground operational support for the scooters. This is a first-of-its-kind partnership between a scooter company and public transit agency. In addition, the Communications Department has pushed out several initiatives, including informing Dayton Public School students how they can use RTA services to get to school. RTA will begin Limited Stop, or LLS service, September 30th, providing direct routing from Dayton neighborhoods to area high schools. The department also completed several out outreach programs at area universities, including participating in new student orientation events at Wright State University and the University of Dayton. The RTA also did presentations for international students and Camp Blue, an event for UD student leaders. This outreach also included a special tour on the flyer for interested UD freshman students. This concludes my report, Mr. Vice President. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Hearing no questions, I will uh, move on to the Chief Executive Officer's report. I think we need to slow this meeting down. No. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going for a record. I know John wants to hang out here. Don't with mess with my discount. <laughs> oh! Good job. <laughs> I do have a few informational <laughs> items for the board. Uh, the first, I just want to give you a heads up on Greyhound. We're coming up uh, on the end of our, our relationship with Greyhound the end of this month. I will tell you that I received contact from them uh, the middle of last week, uh, admitting that uh, their proposed new location, the deal had fallen through. Uh, and then they wanted to talk to me some more about uh, possible future with us and I said well we should start that conversation when I receive a check or an electronic transfer for the thirty nine thousand dollars you owe us uh, and of course the gentleman on the phone said he wasn't authorized to do that and I said well then you need to kick that upstairs uh, if you want to have a conversation with us because you're going to be current if there's going to be any further discussions with us and I suggested they could do that by the beginning of this week and uh, I haven't heard back so at the moment, we're still planning on the operation at our Northwest Transit Center to cease uh, on September the 30th. If that changes, of course, we'll let everybody know. But we will probably this week, barring any news in the next day or two, start posting notices and referring people to contact Greyhound uh, for information about what to do uh, after that day and time. Uh, we're we're going to do our best between now and then to recover uh, the receivables that are out there. Uh, but, you know, we, we'll see how that works out. We had a great visit. Uh, I, I think you might have seen on the electronic sharing of information uh, from two folks from the Czech Republic who came. Uh, they were in the U.S., and one of them happens to be the director, managing director of a museum in the Czech Republic that's uh, dedicated to transportation. And uh, he did a great job educating me uh, on our electric buses that we currently own, the, that we call the Skodas. And although here in Dayton, uh, I would say that that project was kind of fraught with a lot of negativity surrounding it, it was interesting that the perspective in the Czech Republic was that it was one of the very first uh, great contracts uh, for economic development for that country post the Cold War. And they're super proud of it. Uh, they're very interested and they uh, executed their end of the agreement for us to turn over one of the buses to the museum. Uh, and they're making arrangements now for how to transport it from here back there with uh, with our advice, especially on the condition of the fleet and the age it's in, but we're going to save a unit, obviously, uh, for them. But it was a great visit. They, they loved the tour they got from Darren and company of our shops, uh, and uh, they had some fun. They even rode scooters. I saw a picture of them riding scooters, <coughs> uh, but they rode the bus routes as well. So that was a good visit. There'll be more on that towards the end of the year when we start talking about the future of that fleet and when we would turn the bus over to them. Uh, also in the news, it was pretty quietly done, but we hosted, I shouldn't say we, I should say Ms. Howard hosted a group of tri-state procurement professionals. We had several dozen people in the room on the floor below us for two days last week. Uh, and uh, Deborah Howard was one of the founding members of this group, the idea to put it all together. Uh, they come from three different states, 
uh, and uh, it's great. She started that group when she was eight years old, she told me. <laughs> because they've been around a long time. So it was great to see all the folks from some of the other transit systems. Uh, we certainly love being a part of that. You heard a little bit about uh, Gem City Shine. I, I, I want to throw a few more roses. You know, pulling something like that off in a very short period of time is always a little bit of a challenge, but I, I think that's sometimes when our people shine maybe more than uh, they do on a daily basis. It was a great job done to get the, the buses ready, the people ready. Certainly kudos to all our communication efforts <clears throat> and to Chris Cole's team for sure uh, for making it all work. But I'm gonna highlight one guy here that's uh, because I, uh, I, I had some personal observations of how the day went. And that's Mr. Caldwell, who was our leader uh, on, on scene for how the day went. And uh, it was fascinating. Uh, we carried in excess of 20,000 to the event. We, from the park and ride alone, we know it was close to 18,000 rides. Uh, and as the day went on, it was clear that from early on, we were getting heavy loads, even standing loads. Uh, and it, it was clear that changes would have to be made if we were gonna have a, a grand exit. Uh, anyone who does big events knows that uh, you tend to have a flood of people right at the end of the, the primary act, uh, and we did. Uh, but ours was managed so well that when the line, the line never stopped moving. We just kept boarding buses and moving people out. And when the last people got on a bus, we still had buses, and that's unusual. Uh, and the, the brilliance of that, it, that Roland knows this, and I know Chris and others do as well, uh, these were primarily folks who never ride our buses. But that day they were on. It was a great opportunity to sell to them, and we got lots of positive comments. Uh, so for you guys and the entire team that put it all together, great, great job. And many thanks to the University of Dayton. Uh, they immediately said okay to using the UD Arena lot. Uh, there was a conflict with other events. And I'm sure that about halfway through our, our parking of cars, we were outgrowing the space that was given to us probably into the other areas. Uh, and I knew that UD would be okay with that given the nature of the event. So it was really fantastic. So uh, great, great day. Uh, and if you could have been there late at night and saw how many people Roland managed to muster to get behind the wheel of a bus, uh, that was the key. We got a lot of extra buses down there for the departure and it went extremely well. So one more thing I wanna talk about. I know it's not public yet. We're not on live television, Bob, so I'm gonna bring up the triennial. Uh, yeah, as you know, we completed our triennial a few weeks back, and at the exit conference, we were told that there were no deficiencies found. Those are the magic words. Uh, for us, it is our fourth consecutive triennial with no deficiencies found. Uh, a comment was made by a Federal Transit Administration person that uh, she was not aware of anyone else in the nation who had ever done this. We're gonna confirm that before we wave that flag too high. Uh, but I will tell you straight up that uh, with all the changes in the regulatory requirements in the past three years, uh, several of us were convinced we weren't going to get through this without a couple findings, maybe four or five. And you have 21 areas and you can have findings galore. I mean, people get dozens of findings in these things. Uh, I think our neighbors got a few the few days after the ours was done. So we really were hopeful to do well, but we're convinced we weren't gonna get there, and, and we did. Uh, and, and I think anyone who's been through the process knows that we're fortunate that Bob leads that process because Bob does his own triennial ahead of the feds. And that's the key to having the minimal number or the zero number of deficiencies found. So once, we're gonna wait for the official draft letter from the feds, which we should get in a few weeks uh, before we do any publicizing of this, but it is, it's, a, it's a great event and it's a credit to every single department in the organization that understands the need to comply with these regulations and do the right thing as you go forward. You just, you can't get there like this. In fact, uh, one official told me people who had gotten a zero deficiencies finding three years ago uh, had as many as 20 findings this year. So it, it is that much tougher. Uh, and I think it just means that much more to us that, that, that we were able to get through this. Uh, it was a nail biter down to the last couple hours, I think, of the event. But, uh, but 
kudos to Bob and really the entire team uh, who put all this together. It's about a year-long effort, and got to get number five here in a couple of years, so we got to start preparing for that. But uh, but I just wanted to throw those roses. I think it's important, and unless there are questions, that is all I have to report. I have a, qu I have a question um, regarding the Greyhound situation. Um, at the end of the month, if nothing's worked out and that service ceases, um, people will most likely come here for an answer. So I'm, I'm just hoping that your team has some kind of boilerplate message that we have prepared as to what's happening and why it's happening. We'll be ready for that and we'll even advocate for them. Uh, my guess is the service won't stop. The question will be the location. Mm -hmm. uh, they are determined not to pay us and I'm determined that we will be paid. I agree. Uh, and I think th this is a for-profit corporation uh, that has a history of this around the country and, uh, and they're for sale right now if anybody wishes to buy them. But, uh, but we'll definitely do that for our local residents to make sure uh, we do whatever we can. Obviously our concern is that the, you know, the site they will pick may not be accessible by public transportation, so we may need flexible services like our Connect On Demand to make it work but we will definitely be prepared for that, sure. Mark, just to piggy, I have two questions, but one to piggyback sure. off of Ms. Howard's question. Does Greyhound know we're going to release a statement the next day or two stating that our hub will cease operating as a Greyhound terminal uh, very shortly? Are they aware of that or do they, they just think the public will continue to come? They've received three official notifications of that in the past 90 days to their regional manager and one went to Greyhound Corporate as well. But they're aware of the fact that we're going to tell the public that it's ceasing, that we're the yes. ones breaking the news. Because I was asking specifically for the new location information so it could be included so yes. in our announcement. Okay. Uh, the second question, when you had the representatives from the Czech Republic, did they ride our new buses? A new, and they did. What, what were their observations about our new trial. My understanding was they loved it, so mm -hmm. they did. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Uh, any old business? Uh, new business. I'm going to uh, defer to Mr. Corrado. Well, ladies and gentlemen, another year has passed. <laughs> so it's time for the Greater Dayton RTA Nominating Committee to uh, report for the 2019-2020 officers. So just let me read this, uh, this statement here. In accordance with the RTA bylaws, the board's nominating committee consisting of Sharon Howard, John Lumpkin, and myself acting as chair, wish to nominate Sharon E. Harrison as president and David P. Williams as vice president for the calendar year 2019-2020. The new elected officers shall be voted on today and installed at the October 1st, 2019 Board of Trustees meetings. The new officers shall be tasked with establishing chairs for each of our committees, planning, finance, and investment, as well as member assignments for each committee. We want to thank Ms. Hairston and Ms. Ms. Mr. Williamson for their service this past year and also agreeing to serve RT, as RTA's president and vice president for the upcoming calendar year. Please know that your leadership has been very much appreciated and is very much significant in the succession transition of the RTA. In a moment, I'm going to nominate I'm going to make a nomination uh, to the board that we nominate them, but I'd like to ask if there are any other nominations from the floor. No. Okay. So with that being said, uh, I would like to nominate Ms. Hairston and Mr. <clears throat> Williamson as uh, president and vice president for the calendar year of 2019-2020. I'll second that. A nomination has been made and it has been seconded. And uh, the uh, chair will also recognize that no further nominations were heard from uh, the floor or from the board. Uh, 
So all those in favor of the nomination made by Mr. Corrado, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Any abstentions? Nominations have been approved and we will await the installation on October the 1st. I don't know if that merited applause. So. <laughs> Your condolences, maybe. <laughs> so, but thank you. And on behalf of Sharon, I know she thanks you as well for your ongoing confidence. Uh, public comment. Did we receive uh, any requests? No, sir. Okay. No requests for public comment today. Uh, board member comments. I'll start on my left with Ms. Howard. Um, I would just like to say. Um, uh, over the past few months, I look at the RTA much like uh, my life at Miami Valley Hospital. Um, I can only imagine what the employees had to go through with everything that happened over the summer. Um, you didn't have a presidential visit. <laughs> I did, but you didn't. That's probably a good thing. Um, but I just want to make sure that we are taking care of our staff and letting them know how much we appreciate what had to be a very hard summer for all of the extra things that they were asked to do. So hopefully um, your CEO is taking care of you and bringing in chair massages and all kind of nice things for the staff. Um, I just think it's important for us to take a moment to thank the staff and um, make sure we recognize their efforts from this summer. It's been hard. Thank you. Free scooter rides. Free scooter rides. <laughs> chair massages. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to second Ms. Howard's comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Great job this summer with all the adversity that we've seen in the community mm -hmm. and, and stepping up. It's been great. Mm -hmm. it, it just appears to me is that RTA has really, really become a community partner. Yes. And uh, everywhere you look, you see these clean buses. And I, I just think it's great. Ditto to all of the previous comments. Um, same here. Uh, you know, when I see the collaboration, as you mentioned, between RTA and the University of Dayton, um, it really gives meaning to the words Dayton Strong. We're Dayton collaborative. We, we really, you know, as my wife likes to say, we are either the uh, smallest big city in America or the biggest small city in America. Mm -hmm. but. You know, we're able to do this stuff, and it works because we talk to one another. That's great. So, uh, so ditto all that. Mr. Hoagie? Having just gone through this nomination process, uh, I can't help but recall uh, when uh, the cardinal, who is now our pope, got nominated and elected to pope. One of the first things he told the cardinals were, I forgive you for what you just did. <laughs> so, I thought that was a great comment. That I was he like, had. where is he going? <laughs> Give them, they know not what they do. That's right. No further comment. <laughs> All right, Mr. Lumpkin, I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, I was, my applause was relief that I was not nominated. Um, <laughs> Um, ditto to all of the remarks um, that were previously made. And um, I would just like to uh, say I've been encouraged not just by RTA being a, a partner with, um, with, with the community, but just the resilience of our community in the midst of so many tragedies that have happened here recently. Um, it's really encouraging to see that we are a city of thousands and thousands of good people um, and not be defined by you know, natural disasters and one clown that comes and shoots people up and um, our resilience. And uh, when people always say a lot of bad things about Dayton, this is a, a really good place. And um, it's good that that story is being told here, um, here recently. Well, part of the reason that Dayton can say Dayton strong is because RTA is strong. I really commend the way that we have stepped up to the plate in so many instances without being begged. You know, we are a part of this community and the community is beginning to recognize us. Point number two, congratulations on our fourth clean triennial. Wow. And I hope that they are able to prove that we're, you know, the first. 
And then, just on a side note, I was out of the country last month, and I wore a Dayton Strong t-shirt most times. Every time we had to fly someplace, I wore my Dayton Strong t-shirt. We are known around the world now for the way that we address incidents that happen. They say, nothing knocks us down. Um, People are taking notes, they're paying attention, how Dayton works together to handle things. It just makes me proud to be from the biggest little city or the, <laughs> the smallest big city. We're, Dayton is recognized around the world now because of the way we address things that would knock other people out. And please, we've had enough tests, we've passed them. Let's move on to the next grade level, please, for more tests. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. I think I would have set the record had we not engaged in this big love fest for our community. Oh. So, but, uh, but that be it, as, be it as it may. There is no need nor a request for executive session, I do not believe. And uh, so with that in mind, I will uh, uh, entertain a motion for this August body to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, any abstentions. This meeting is adjourned.